Okay, welcome to another video. This is one I'm very excited about making and actually a little bit surprised because I wasn't even aware that this was a thing that the MX Linux team were even working on. So I very recently did a video on MX Linux 19.2 which uses the XFC desktop environment. However, I jumped onto their news page this morning and was very surprised to see that they have been working on a KDE edition which is currently now in beta 1 and is available for testing. So what I'm going to do is install it onto my computer here we're just going to have a very brief look at it because it is in beta, but I thought I'd let you guys know that this is something that is being worked on and it's something that's very exciting to be honest. So KDE is my favourite desktop environment and MS Linux is a very solid and sturdy distribution. So marrying them two together in a nice specialised ISO is something that I can definitely get behind. Of course it's based on Debian Buster, so it's not going to be the most recent version of KDE. It's quite old at 5.14.5, .5, but that's not too much of a worry really. And there's going to be some issues as we are in a beta, as you would expect. So some of these issues are... When setting up the wireless network connection, users will need to edit the connection profile and check all users may connect to this network, so the auto connection will happen on subsequent reboots. Fortunately for me, I use Ethernet, so that's not something I really need to worry about. Some users with Intel video chipsets may need to use i915.invert__brightness equals 1. That was a mouthful. Boot code as some machines apparently have brightness values backwards in the driver. I guess a bit weird. There are live menu options for that code. The manual has not yet been updated to reflect KDE Plasma Edition. Understandable, this is all very new. The beta will receive updates over time through the repositories, but certain items such as the live system and some user settings defaults will not be obvious without some user intervention. Then they link some little threads here for feedback and bug manager and stuff like that. I'll link all of this in the description below if you want to have a look at it as well as the link to the ISO if you want to have a look at the beta while it's in testing. For those of you that might be worried that that means that they're switching this out for the XFCE version and that's not going to be the flagship anymore, you need not worry. So some users have already asked this in the comments here and it has been sort of confirmed that that isn't the case. So if you look here, Dolphin Oracle has said the XFC release will remain the flagship and available in 64, 32 and 64 bit AHS. So anyone that was a bit concerned that that might be happening, you need not worry. So what I'm going to do is very quickly install it onto a desktop, um, onto a disk. So I'm not sure that this install is going to be updated to reflect that we're installing KD or anything like that. But again, I'm sure that's all going to be worked on and you know what you're installing on because you can see it on the live desktop anyway. So what we're going to do is change our keyboard settings. Right, so we want to just add the English UK variant. So let's go to Layout, English United Kingdom, which is right there. Click Add, and we're going to remove this USA one. We don't need it. Click Apply. It'll take a few seconds to save them settings. So I'm wondering how much RAM this uses, because obviously MX Linux markets itself as the midweight distribution and these days XFC and KDE are kind of neck and neck with the amount of RAM and stuff they use at boot so I'm going to get a RAM reading as well and then try and compare that to what we got on XFCE I think we was leveling at about 500 to 600 megabytes on XFCE so as long as it's within that range I'm, I'm a happy bunny so let's click OK and let's go next so I'm just going to do an auto auto install using an entire disk and we're going to do it to the Drevo because the sand disk is what I'm currently reviewing OpenSUSE on. So let's go next. Is it okay to format the entire disk? It is indeed. And we'll put the bootloader as well on SDB as well. So that's going to do that. I'm going to click next. Um, I'm not too worried about all of this because we're only going to be testing it very quickly but I will change my computer name. Just call it Tyler MX. I'm going to leave that as default. I'm not too fussed. Okay, let's change our locale to United Kingdom and let's change this to Europe, London. There we go. And click next. User account time. I'm going to do the same for my route. And I'm going to auto log in. Oh, so it's even got the save live desktop. I wonder if that actually works on here. We're going to test it actually. What we're going to do is move our panel to the top and see if it's at the top when we boot into our new installation. So let's configure the panel, go to screen edge and just chuck it at the top there. And that's all we're gonna do because I just wanna see if this actually takes effect because of course this was built with XFCE in mind. Let's go next. Cool, I'm gonna pause the video here and then when we come back we'll be booting off disk. 
Okay, we are in business, and like you can see, it has indeed remembered the live desktop changes, which I was actually surprised about. I wasn't sure if it was going to remember that. For some reason, it's opened up two welcome screens. So what I'm going to do is move this back to the bottom, just to use it as the default, so we can compare it to how it looks with XFCE. So of course, the XFCE version by default will have the panel to the left with your power on and power off buttons and stuff here. We have your application launcher down here. What this version has opted for instead is to move onto the sides and have this down at the bottom, which is a layout I actually prefer than having the panel onto the left. So I'm already a bit happy with how the default look stands at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is jump into this tweak panel setting and see if this is similar to how it works on the XFCE version. Let's have a look. No, right, what have we got here then? Let's move this out of the way. <laughs> We've got two of them. Okay, so config options, reset light DM, login screen. Use to, oh okay, so they, they will make the um, the conf file for your rad so it knows that we are using Radian, although we have an existing one there already. Do we? Let's have a look. Okay, so there's no shortcuts for terminal out of the box. So I'm just gonna jump into the xorg folder here and see what's in there before we go ahead and test this out. So let's go for cd etc x11 xorg.d, uh, conf.d even. Okay, so there is not one in there at the moment. So before we do it then, let's see what the screen tearing situation is like. So I can already see that we have got quite a bit of tear in there, but let's just jump into a YouTube video and really see how bad it is. Let's go on to screen tearing. Test. I must say, having that in a welcome screen for you um, to make the actual file for you is actually a very cool idea because not a lot of people know quite why they've got screen tearing or how to fix it. Okay, so I can already see a lot of tearing there. So what we're gonna do then, is we're gonna let that make the file for us instead of making it ourselves. And what that's gonna do is make a comp file with the tear-free option and of course the graphics card identifier. So let's do that now and then we're gonna do a reboot after that and then that way we can get a RAM reading before we sort of change anything about. So let's go to use tear-free AMD option, click apply. It's gonna ask you for a password because you need root privileges to make anything in this folder here. So type in your root password, and now we're gonna check it out. There we go, do we have Vim installed out of the box? 20 m camp. we do indeed. Okay, so like I thought, it's made the device identifier, which is AMD, the driver's AMD GPU, and then you have the tear-free flag, which is on. So what we're gonna do now then, is do a little reboot, test out that screen tearing to see if that, of course, has worked out of the box. There is no reason why it shouldn't have done. I, I like that idea. However, you can see that it's not quite as fleshed out as the XFCE version just yet. There is no other sort of additional settings to manage or control the panel in any which way. In other, we have enable mounting of internal drives by non-root users and enable kernel sandbox. Password for administrative tasks, root, or you could change it to the user password. That's an interesting idea. So what we're gonna do then is do a reboot, get a RAM reading, and then just see the difference in package-wise and then maybe install a theme or two and wrap it up there because this is a beta. There's, I don't want to go through too much and sort of test out too much until it's got the final release. So let's go for a reboot. And then I'll pause the video and we'll be back once it's rebooted. Okay, so we're back in business. We are currently using 667 megabytes of RAM. So slightly higher than the XFCE version. But again, this is in beta and that might be because a few things are starting that don't need to so what we'll do is we'll do another reboot just towards the end to get a final one to give it a bit more of an extra chance there so what i want to do is see if that screen tearing option has worked and if it has i'm very impressed that they do that for the users out of the box there so let's jump back into the screen tearing test there's no reason why it shouldn't have worked but i just want to clarify that it does all right let's full screen that bad boy and it has, so I don't see a single bit of screen tear in there. So very good. They do do a few little nice things for the users there just to get it up and going without having too much manual intervention, which I do think is a big plus for the MX Linux distribution. Okay then, let's have a look at what this thing comes installed with out of the box. So a lot of it will be basically the same as the XFCE stuff. Obviously you'll have some different games for the K patients and things like that. Graphics wise, you still have GIMP, you have Ocular, Gwenview, Digicam, Internet wise, ah brilliant. So I was hoping that they wasn't gonna go the K-mail route with the Condi and stuff and it doesn't appear that they have. So it's using Thunderbird as your default email client. 
the same as the XFC version. KTorrent is your torrent application. It uses KRDC for remote desktop connections and Firefox is and remains your default web browser. Multimedia has Clementime, VLC, K3B and a couple of other things like Pulse Audio and Asla Mixer. Office wise you still get the full LibreOffice suite. It also has Foliate eBook Viewer. I'm not sure if that is included in the XFC version actually. I don't remember seeing it but it might be. So system wise they'll, there's going to be a few different things here because of the KDE desktop environment. So for example you're going to be using Dolphin for your files manager as opposed to Funar. Let's see what else we got. So we have back in time, backup tools, KSIS guard. It still has Midnight Commander MC for the terminal based files manager has the drop down yeah, I can never say that yakwake drop down terminal um, so a lot of the stuff in utilities then I'm going to imagine is different oh so it even has Cavantum theming manager so that's quite cool so I'll tell you what let's get some different themes but before we do that let's see if it has all of the MX tools included as well so if we go to MX tools let's see if everything in here is the same as what we'd expect um, I think it appears to be. I don't see any glaring omissions. Okay, it all seems to be there and pretty much the same as what you'd expect on the XFCE version. Let's open up the package installer. Bear in mind it's going to have test packages because we are of course in a beta so I'm going to imagine. Yeah, so if you go into the test repo there, let's have a look at what this does. So you're about to use the MX test repository whose packages are provided for testing purposes only. There we go, and then there's all the testing packages ready for us to have a little play around with. And of course you get the Debian backports as well. And then the same as the XFC version, you also have the Flatpak Flathub repository here where you can install Flatpak straight from the Flathub repo, all within the package installer here. I was very impressed with this when I first saw it actually. It'll take a little while and then it will populate this screen with a load of Flatpaks. There you go. Okay, cool. Everything seems to be behaving exactly the same as the XFC version so far. Right, what we're going to do then is change a few themes and then kind of wrap it up there. We'll do one more reboot, reboot towards the end though to get a final RAM reading just to sort of compare it to XFCE. And as I said in the installation period, the manual here will not be updated to reflect anything to do with the KDE stuff. So don't go in here hunting for anything that's KDE specific because this hasn't been updated yet. Okay, cool. Let's jump back into the theming then. Uh, this won't have global theme will it because it's 5.14 no okay so the theming is going to be scattered across a few different applications but for the most part you should be okay by just going to desktop theme here nope wrong one widget theme <laughs> here we go widget style no nope, wrong one again look and feel this is why I like the newer versions of KDE of just a global theme package. There we go. So by default it has the two breeze themes, just dark and light. I wonder if they're going to make their own theme. That would be quite interesting. Let's go to get new looks. Let's get the good old Layum. And we also have Cavantum, don't we? So we're going to install the Cavantum Layum package as well, just to make it look a bit more nice and uniform across the desktop. So Cavantum Layum Pling. So we're going to download this Covantum package. This is asking for the password for the theme. And let's download this package here. And we're just going to extract it to our downloads folder. We're not going to do too much in this video because it is a beta, but I am going to test it during the whole beta period and then report any bugs and stuff that I might find. So let's extract this to our home download folder. Done. Did we get a did we get a dialogue saying done on, on Arc? We didn't appear to. Right, let's jump into the theme package now that should be done it is indeed so let's close that okay so we're gonna to have to close this and reopen it for it to appear there the only thing about the older version of KDE it's not as sort of smooth and flashy as the newer versions but it seems to be okay so let's go to desktop theme again or was it was it look and feel was it widget what was it look and feel there we go so there you go layon has now appeared so let's apply that and as you can see, things don't look quite right yet. So what we're going to do is install the Cavantum theme now. Let's select that folder. And then click install. And then we're going to go and apply that theme now, which will be right down at the bottom. There we go. And let's go use theme. 
there you go so things look a whole lot better already so i wonder if it works with the transparency on dolphin no it doesn't appear to out of the box just yet okay that's not to worry i have had trouble getting that to work with older versions of kde in the past but i eventually managed to do it so we should be able to get that going at some point right let's close that and let's close that right what i'm going to do now then is as it's in beta we won't go too crazy we're going to do a final reboot and get a ram reading just wrap it up there okay so we're back in business let's see how much ram we've managed to get it down to now it might be a little bit more because of what we've done with the theming and stuff but you never know there we go so we managed to get it up to 700 so real world you're going to look at about 700 megabytes ram at boot bearing in mind this is a beta though and that could be brought down a bit by the time we get the final release so i'm not going to go too crazy and sort of poke around too much as this is a beta and it wouldn't be fair to show things off before it's fully finished but I'm very excited about where this is going to go. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and join the Discord, which is linked in the description. Bye-bye.